Snap Center Role Based Access Control, RBAC, enables you to delegate control of Snap Center resources to different users or groups of users. This video demonstrates how to set up role based access control in Snap Center. If you are not familiar with Snap Center RBAC, you might want to first look at the video on RBAC strategies and concepts before watching this video. This video does not review the Snap Center plugin for VMware vSphere, which provides additional role based access control for VMs and data stores. In today's world, security is essential. You need to be able to isolate access to the activities that each user can perform and also control which resources they can access. For example, a SQL Server DBA should access and protect only SQL Server databases, but not Oracle databases. We'll look at two components in SNAP Center, roles and access. Roles govern the actions that can be performed. Access governs the resources on which actions can be performed. Note that you do not create users in Snap Center. You create users or groups in Active Directory, and then Snap Center uses those Active Directory users or groups. Let's look at how we set up roles and access in Snap Center. Looking at Snap Center, notice in the top bar that I'm logged in as the Snap Center admin. As an admin, I have access to all the plugins installed in this instance of Snap Center. You can see in the Plugins drop-down list a list of all the plugins installed in Snap Center. Now we'll learn how to restrict access to specific plugins. From the two RBAC components in Snap Center, Roles and Access, we'll look at Roles first. Click Settings, and then click Roles. Snap Center includes several predefined roles that you can modify or copy and customize. By the way, a user can be assigned to more than one role. Let's create a role. While SQL is being used for this example, the process works for the other applications that Snap Center supports as well. In the Roles page, click New. Enter the name of the role you created in Active Directory. We'll enter SQL Admin Group. Enter a description and click Next. In the Permissions page, select Permissions. Enter a domain name, and because we're creating a group role and not a user role, click Group. In the search box, enter the Active Directory group name and click Add. Notice the checkbox for all members of this role can see and operate on each other's objects. Checking this box enables other members of the role to see resources such as volumes and hosts of other members in the role. This checkbox is especially helpful for large enterprises with multiple teams, each having multiple admins, managing many resources. Click Next. Review the summary and click Finish. Now that we've created a role that governs what actions a user or group can do, Let's look at how we can control resources and access for these users or groups. Click User Access. The list of assets that we can control access to includes hosts, plugins, policies, resource groups, run as credentials, and storage connections. Let's give access to some assets to the group we just created. From the Asset drop-down list, select Plugin, and then select SQL Server Plugin. If you were working with other assets or plugins, you'd pick those assets or plugins to work on. But because we're working only on SQL Server plugin, we'll select the SQL Server plugin and click Assign. In the domain box, enter the domain. Click the Group Radio button. In the search box, enter the AD group name. Then click Add and then OK. We're finished. Now that we've customized a role and assigned access to assets in Snap Center, when you log back in as a SQL Server user, you'll see a restricted set of assets and actions. For example, on the dashboard list of plugins, Oracle is not even a plugin option for the SQL Server user to see. As we look at any page storing resources, any Oracle or other assets not assigned have been filtered out and strictly controlled. 
Many customers prefer to use AD groups, so when they add a user on Active Directory and assign to a group, they don't have to do anything in Snap Center. For example, the groups could be based on application for easy correlation, with group names like SQL Admin, Oracle Admin, or Exchange Admin. Then you can just assign each group to the appropriate resources, storage connections, policies, etc. Or you could use a different group naming convention, such as using a role each person has within Snap Center. For example, Snap Center Viewer, Snap Center Admin, Snap Center Backup Admin, Snap Center Infra Admin. Yet another way of group naming might be to combine the above two SQL Backup Admin, Oracle Backup Admin, Exchange Backup Admin. None of these options are required, but setting up Active Directory groups that match your Snap Center access requirements makes navigation of RBAC much easier. In summary, we reviewed how to create a role and assign permissions to govern actions. Next, we looked at the assets or resources upon which users or groups can perform those actions. Finally, we reviewed some best practices that involve Active Directory use. To learn more, look at other videos on the NetApp TechCom TV channel on YouTube. Also, you can find detailed how-to instructions in the SNAP Center Documentation Center listed at docs.netapp.com. Thank you for watching.